about what we're in for today. Today's agenda is uh, how to use LinkedIn to help drive sales and build credibility for your, uh, for your business and uh, as an individual. The four main areas that we're going to discuss, and we're going to go from slides to actual viewing LinkedIn, um, are profile optimization. We're just going to discuss the importance of that. We're going to get into how to build your network through connections, get to my favorite part, which is prospecting and lead generation. I believe LinkedIn is the most powerful tool for lead generation. And then the, the last piece we're going to get into is establishing yourself as uh, an industry expert. And I know that uh, there are a lot of power users. I was provided a list of about 14 folks and uh, we've gone through and looked at how many connections they have and, and viewed some of their profiles. So I imagine there will be some questions. Please type those into the, the, the chat box, and uh, Ben will moderate that. And uh, for, uh, let's, let's just get started. So what I want to keep in the back of everybody's mind as it relates to LinkedIn for Business, there are essentially three pillars which LinkedIn can help you achieve. One is building an online brand and credibility for yourself and your business. Two, LinkedIn is wonderful for lead generation and growing out your, your book of business. And then three, it's a, a communication platform. So we'll get into, I want you to keep all three of those pillars in the, the back of your mind as we discuss uh, LinkedIn networking. And it, we're going to discuss first profiles and having a good, solid profile, uh, and that is essentially what building credibility is all about. It all starts with your online business profile on LinkedIn, and we'll get into to some of the reasons uh, why having a good, solid profile is important. Um, there are four key criteria that you're going to want to look at when you analyze uh, your profile. And we'll flip Hello? Can you hear me? You did. All right, Greg, you're unmuted as myself, so continue on. Unmuted. A high level of attention. The first one. I don't know how to tell you this story. So if everybody could mute their phones, it will help with uh, cutting down on some of the background noise. But the four main areas are one, and we're going to walk through this on, on LinkedIn. One is getting your profile to 100% completeness. Number two is your headline, which is right here. Number three is your current position, summary, and skills, and specialties. Now, the reason why this is important, and I'll ask a couple questions to, to the group here, is prior to taking a meeting with a prospect, have you ever Googled their name? Um, has and on the flip side, has a prospect ever Googled your name? That whole Googling somebody's name is called a vanity search. And I would uh, venture to say, or I would put my money where my mouth is, and if I was to take the 14 people on this call and if I was to type in Google their name, chances are their LinkedIn profile would either be number one two or three within search. So LinkedIn profiles come up very, very high. We all know that. And so the importance of having a good profile is people are going to search for you and see your profile. So let's look, let's look at the four areas that I discussed. If, if everyone's logged in, into their account when they view their profile, this here is called the headline. And this is important because this is the first thing that people see in the search results. And it's also, your headline is kind of like the title tag in your website. It follows you around the internet. Now the key thing with getting a good solid headline written for your business is you want to take into consideration uh, what a, somebody would potentially be searching for to find you. In other words, like what keywords do you want to be known for? So you want to make sure that you get those keywords into your headline. 
Uh, another very important um, uh, another very important uh, area to update is your current position, which shows up here in your profile, and that, for everybody on the call, would be uh, Zilab's current position. Also, get your keyword in there. Then the, the third and also important area is your summary, because that is what appears at the top, generally speaking, which I'll, I'll show you how you can change this in a minute, but that's the first thing that people see. So you want to make sure that it is good copy written here so it, it, it attracts the user to move on and actually read the summary. Then we have uh, specialties where you can also insert your domain expertise keywords and keywords that you want to be known for. And then the last area, as I scroll down my profile, which I'm using as an example here, is they have a new area which is called uh, skills. And this is essentially helping LinkedIn to categorize everybody. So where we're going to really highlight as it pertains to your profile to uh, use those four areas. Now, associated with your profile, there are a lot of other things that you can do in terms of installing uh, presentations um, and your recommendations. Um, the last piece associated with, with profile that I'm going to share with you is that you have the ability to move these different categories around. As you can see, I roll the mouse over. If I want my references to appear above my summary, I can easily uh, move this move this down or move this around. So you can really tailor how you want your profile to, to look. And obviously trying to get it to 100% completeness, LinkedIn will walk you through that. And uh, that, is, that is the goal. Those are the, the key areas associated with uh, your profile. Questions, comments, feel free to uh, interject. Moving along. Yeah, Greg, to for, from this, oh, Greg, I, I know the, the, the Amsterdam team has a, has a quick question, and then I have a, a question as well. So, Hans, if you want to go ahead. Hans, are you? Uh, was the question, will we have QA at the end? Yes, the, the goal is to answer any questions along the way, and then we're going to have at least 15 minutes of, of QA uh, for comments, if, if somebody wants to share success stories, things like that. Ben, was that the question? Uh, no, well, my question was, you mentioned the, the summary, to be able to have that enticing. From, a, from sort of a hunter perspective, how do you make yourself enticing? Well, I can use uh, myself as an example, and obviously it could still use a little bit of work, but I think from a summary is, you know, you, you kind of want to put yourself in the position of somebody who will be visiting your profile, so may really make it about them. Uh, so, for instance, on, on my summary, I would assume that people are going to be finding me on LinkedIn because they're going to be looking for SEO consultant or internet marketing professional. Uh, you know, you really have bragging rights on your LinkedIn profile because essentially it is an online resume. So I think just making it intriguing, um, not so much about yourself, but more about how you can help people on LinkedIn. I also like including you know, your contact information, um, including you know, bullet points, which are fairly easy to do, and just making it easy to read. Hopefully that helps. So let's move on. Yes, great, right, thank you. Uh, so getting connections on LinkedIn, we're going to walk through these six uh, techniques and growing your audience on LinkedIn. And really there are two approaches to this. Approach number one, and I've done both in, in my past, approach number one is to build a very tight network of like-minded professionals who are all, you know, share the same interests. That's option number one. Uh, and then option number two is to open your network to everyone and anyone. 
So it's really up to you and how you decide you're going to grow your network, but it is very important to consistently grow and reach out to new people. We're going to look at five or six different ways to grow your network, and I'll, I'll flip over and, and go through some of these. Um, and, you know, you might need to discuss things internally on, on how you want to handle some of these um, because, you know, you might have uh, rules and regulations within your organization. Uh, but let's go through e each one of these, and we'll uh, do, a, do a quick walkthrough. And, and, again, this might be uh, pretty, pretty basic stuff for, for everybody on the call, but it is important to take all of these into consideration as, as you grow your network. So simply contacts, add connections, and one of the easiest ways to really build a big network quickly is to import your existing contacts, which you, you can either plug in your personal email address here, which will then sync up with you know Gmail or Hotmail or Yahoo Mail. You can import your contacts here. And that way, when you do that, LinkedIn will show you how many people you already are connected with who are already on the platform and gives you the ability to connect with them. It's a simple step and a quick way to, to grow your network. Uh, you also have, back to your profile, it's important to put in where you went to school, so therefore you can, LinkedIn will automatically ask you if you want to connect with uh, alumni or colleagues of, of, of past places you work. LinkedIn also has a very strong suggestion engine, which is in beta right now, which uh, this is one of these cool pages which you can uh, simply just scroll and it never really ends, and they will give you all of the people who they feel as though you should be connected to. Simply add them as a connection here. Uh, the, the third point, uh, if we flip back to the slide here, is email integration. And I'm sure that there's a couple of folks on this call who are currently have this installed. Uh, but if you are using Gmail, Google Apps, they have a product called Reportive, which LinkedIn re recently bought. And if you're using Outlook, they have an Outlook extension, um, which can easily be installed. I strongly recommend this, and you might need to, to check with your IT department to see if that works um, with your current email system. Um, but this is really, really neat. When you get an email from somebody or when you email somebody, it will automatically pull in their LinkedIn information and their most recent connections. Um, if anybody has any experience with this, you know, feel free to, to chime in. But it is really, really powerful. So this brings LinkedIn directly to your inbox. And with one click, you can add folks to your LinkedIn network directly from your email, never even going to uh, the platform. Uh, the, the next uh, connection that we're going to discuss is groups. Uh, we're going to discuss a little bit more about groups when we get to industry expertise and, and building your credibility as an expert. But the, the power of groups is that you can connect with anybody within a group without having their email address. So it's a best practice to join groups, especially groups that are related to uh, your industry, industry leading groups, and then simply click on members. As you can see, I'm, I'm flipping through the, the screens here, and then um, you can simply add them as a connection directly from a group, and you do not need their email address because you are currently in a group together. And then the last piece, or the second to last piece, is advanced search, which we're going to discuss a little bit more when we get to the prospecting area. Um, that is very simply just searching for people within an advanced search. Um, this screen here. And then the last one is add your LinkedIn to your email signature, which gives people the ability to connect. There are many other ways to grow your connections, but these are the top six that we have identified. So moving along to my favorite part, which is lead generation and prospecting. And I'll share a short personal story on how LinkedIn has changed my business career. But before we do that, this is one of the uh, slides that I like, which shows how people make buying decisions. And whether you're buying a $100,000 or a million dollar software package, or if you're going to hire a lawyer, or even um, hire a, a local plumber, 
people, the sphere of influence in the way that people buy has not changed. People still buy through this outer rung, which is your friends, family, and coworkers. So that's uh, another reason why LinkedIn is, is, is powerful, because it's a personal network, and it's the first sphere at which people make buying decisions. Next, after that, you can see that you know, prospects go to the web, um, you know, information on the Internet, radio, TV, newspaper. So the reason why I share that is because as you are looking to grow your book of business, get out there and, and find, find more people, you want one people to find you in search. That gets back to your profile, which we'll get into uh, a little bit when we, when we get into lead generation prospecting. That's the best way is when people find you, you know, obviously inbound versus outbound. But let's talk a little bit about outbound. Uh, searching profiles and finding prospects. And I'm sure that there are folks uh, within the, the sales and biz, business development area that are using this aggressively every, every day. But we want to bring uh, people up to speed on this and, and show a, a couple examples. Um, here you can see all I did was click on advanced search within LinkedIn. And I think this one page probably is my favorite page on the Internet. Uh, because it has been so uh, beneficial in, in my career. Uh, just a real quick short story. Uh, I live in Los Angeles. Uh, I moved here from the Boston area. I didn't really have any contacts. I was selling software to Fortune 500 companies. It was project management and, and quality assurance software. And I simply woke up every single day, went to this particular page, typed in a, a couple of uh, titles, keywords, and then found people within a 50-mile radius, searched for them, and we'll walk through a couple examples, contacted them. Two years later, $2 million sales territory, simply contacting 8 to 10 people per day from this exact page, potential buyers. I built that network. It worked very, very well. And what I love about it is anybody can do it. So it's pretty self-explanatory from this, this page. Uh, LinkedIn, there are over 100 million users. So there certainly is a, a big market here. And it's used by 100% of the Fortune 500 companies. So in other words, C-level executives from all Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 companies have profiles on LinkedIn. Not every single one of them, but at least the, the C-level executives are representative. Uh, very simple. I'll just pull a couple examples. I don't claim to know your business, but I'll just uh, do a couple simple ones. So I always like to type in current position. So just type in legal. Let's just do e-discovery, which is just one of the keywords that I pulled from your, your, your website. I won't even sort by geography, um, but I will narrow it a little to, say, pull up. Um, I like to really sort by industries because it certainly helps narrow it down. So let's just do um, you know, legal practices, legal services. And again, you could be creative with this, but now I see 114 uh, search results. And I could certainly narrow this down a little bit more. But I go through this, you know, I have now a list of pretty targeted people that I would be able to connect with just by simply connecting. If I, and if we're in groups together, for instance, this person is in a group, it makes it that much easier to connect. Um, what's neat about this is you can also save this search and have it emailed to you on a weekly or monthly basis, which just again gives you a good, uh, good list of, of folks you should be connecting with. And if we're to go back, you know, this is really where you want to, to be creative. Let's just say a uh, CIO. So let's just say if, if, if I was uh, working for Zylabs and I wanted to um, do some business development. I would probably, you know, chief information officer, e-discovery. I'm going to put in. Um, I always like to do location, which narrows it down. It's much easier to do business in your backyard than it is 5,000 miles away. So I'm just going to do. I just want to look at every single uh, chief information officer within a 50-mile radius of my zip code 
who is working for firms that have uh, let's see, I, I, could, I could sort it to, to firms who have over X number of employees, or I could say, let's just do, for the, the sake of uh, conversation here, let's just do, I want to search for CIOs who are in law practices or legal services, and again, you can see the long list here that you can specify, and I want to do a search, and here I get 10 results which I could go through and reach out and connect with these people. Uh, it's a best practice if you, if you find somebody who really would be a good contact to add to your network is to um, pick up the phone, give them a call, introduce yourself. There's no such thing as a cold call anymore. You know, I can simply look at this person's profile and see you know, where they went to school, what their interests are, you know, they're, they're attending this event, and I can simply pick up the phone, call him, uh, let him know that I saw his profile on LinkedIn, introduce myself, send him a card in the mail, and now he is part of my network, and he will be consistently uh, seeing information that I share, post, things like that. Any questions about searching profiles, finding prospects, connecting with them? If anybody has any success stories that they want to share or any advanced ways that they've used this particular feature, be open to hearing some of those. If not, let's move on into, again, building your credibility using LinkedIn, establishing yourself as an industry expert, and communicating effectively. Uh, we touched a little bit upon groups, on how groups is a great way to, uh, com uh, to get connections because you have that like-minded, the fact that the two of you are in a group, it gives you the ability to connect. So let's take a quick look at starting a group and why that's important. Um, also, joining industry-specific groups. Uh, number three is my favorite, which is answering questions. Uh, number four, updating your status and sharing great content. And then rewarding new connections is, is, is really the last nugget that I will share here. But there's a couple things that are interesting about starting a group. Um, when you own a group, you have quite a few privileges as being the moderator of that group. Um, one, you can control what type of information is being shared. And within groups, you can share a lot of information in different ways. You can start a discussion. You can create a poll. You can ask questions. You can post content. Um, you can put in RSS feeds. So as the group moderator, you get to, to, to decide um, which RSS feeds are being put in here. So obviously, put your own if you're the group moderator, or put some of the best industry experts. Um, some other neat things about uh, groups is you can um, reach out to any of the members as the group moderator. Um, I think it's up to once a week. You can send a message out to all of the members of your group. And I don't suggest doing a marketing message, but if there's an upcoming conference that you're attending that you feel as though the group members would, would enjoy, um, here's just a quick example. I started this group uh, a couple years ago. And I really haven't done too much with it. Uh, it's just a, uh, a geographic group. So it's South Bay of Los Angeles networking executives. And you can see that it's climbed to 671 members, which you can check out the, the statistics. What's also neat about owning and managing your group, and I know there are some groups that are currently being managed uh, by your team, uh, there are a couple of neat things that you can do, which I do recommend, is to set up an autoresponder to anybody who joins the group. And if you can see, I just went to uh, templates, templates here, and you can set up an autoresponder here so you create the template and the welcome message. And you, know, you don't want to be too salesy, but at least set this up so anybody who's a new member that joins will get a message, and it will come directly from you. You can include uh, resources, include links to your website, include videos, uh, things like that. And then here from the, the management portal, you, know, you can set up uh, all different types of uh, parameters that you want in terms of how you want to run and manage your group. But it is recommended that you, you start a group. Uh, similarly, join industry-related groups. 
Uh, number three is, is answer questions. Not too many people get involved with uh, this, but it is a, uh, a great resource. So here is just, I just went to more answers, and these are people asking questions every single day. So what I recommend here is, let's just do, I imagine some people are writing uh, questions about e-discovery. Again, you know, it's, it's just a, a term that I pulled from, from your website. But here I just went to advanced search, typed in e-discovery, and here you get a series of questions that people are asking, which then gives you the ability to answer, again, establishing yourself as an expert. And you can say, see here it says, please respond if you're familiar with the term e-discovery. I'm running a study on e-discovery in LinkedIn community. So a, a, a technique here is to save in your drafts. A lot of people are going to ask the same questions related to e-discovery or related to any of your key phrases. Uh, you can also grab an RSS feed or an automated message anytime anybody does ask a questions related to your particular key phrase. But come up with a couple of uh, canned answers, and then you can reuse those over time. As people ask questions, you have the ability to provide the answer, and then people all rate your answers. And this also shows up in your news stream, which we'll, which we'll get to, which is publishing content. And it does really differentiate you um, as an, an industry leader and an export, expert. And as people ask these questions, uh, obviously they have a need, they have a, an, an itch. And if you can solve that, it's just another form of uh, prospecting. And if I was just to do EDRM, uh, industry acronym. Let's just see if there are any questions related to EDRM. And yes, you can see that there are 13 questions. So not a lot, but these are industry-specific questions and establishing yourself as the expert answering those. So we're not going to cover this one too much, but, but status updates and, and, and sharing great content. Um, anytime you log in your account, LinkedIn is going to show you the, the curated industry-specific news that they feel as though you are most interested in. For some reason, it's running slow. But then it gives you the ability to share content. And I do recommend sharing that content on a, on a regular basis, whether it be once a day or once a week, getting back to uh, your project goals. Let me show you exactly what I mean by this. share an update. Here you can attach videos, attach links, letting people know exactly what it is that, that you're most interested in. Uh, so number five is rewarding new connections. This is another uh, best practice, whereas when we all log into our LinkedIn accounts, you can see right, right here your inbox. And if you're anything like me, anytime you log into your account, you're going to get a lot of invitations. Now back to your strategic goal, you can decide how you want to build your network. Option number one is only let a very niche focused like-minded professionals into your network or to invite everybody. My school of thought now or my strategy now is I invite everybody. So as you log in your account, we're all going to see a bunch of invitations here. Um, a best practice is to, if you're going to accept the invitation, is to send them a message and reward them with uh, something from this particular message. And I, I feel as though this particular practice is just being polite. LinkedIn is one-to-one -one business networking, so it's kind of like being at a cocktail party or a chamber or a, um, or, or a conference, and somebody reaches their hand out to you because they have found you on LinkedIn, and if you're not going to respond back to them by sending them a nice message, it, it's almost as if you're not um, reaching out and shaking their hand. So uh, a strategy here is within your email your inbox, create a draft message, and spend a little bit of time, try a short version of your draft message 
to respond back to people who have reached out to you, and then also try a longer version and provide resources saying, hi, Monica, thanks for reaching out. You know, LinkedIn's been a great resource for me, helping my build my, my network. I look forward to our, our interactions. Um, you know, if, if you want to see what we've been up to uh, recently, here's a link to our blog, which we update regularly. We also have a, an active YouTube channel, which we post uh, interesting videos related to e-discovery. Check that out. But basically, send them a, a message rewarding them for, for reaching out and, and finding you. And again, each, each one of these have, a, have a, a, a business process to work efficiently and effectively so you're not recreating the wheel every, every single time. Um, related to communication and, and posting messages, we always like to follow the three E principle. E number one is be entertaining. E number two is, is be educating or educational. And E three is um, be engaging. So if you always remember that, anytime you post anything on LinkedIn or any one of your social networking, you always want to ask you those questions. And don't, I always tell people, don't ever post anything that you wouldn't want to see on the cover of the Wall Street Journal. Um, it can get you in some trouble. So just a little graphic here. If you run these loyalty, trust, consistency, credibility, all lead to positive branding and, and credibility. Inconsistency, distrust, disloyal. It's a social network. It's interactive. Uh, have fun with it. And I'd like to open it up for uh, any questions. And uh, my last slide is remember to have a plan with goals. Set it up weekly, monthly, quarterly. I think part of your goals uh, should be to build your network. So my maybe 10 new connections per week. You could always go back to the slide to find out how connections, uh, maybe two a day. Um, I like to do my LinkedIn social networking at 9.30 on Friday morning. Between 9.30 and 10 is when I go in and take care of uh, all of my, my LinkedIn networking. Um, again, work your plan. Be targeted. Be social. And then track and monitor your success while having fun. Hopefully there's uh, some questions or some comments. All right, Greg, thank you. Yeah, if everyone has any questions, I know that uh, I've seen this presentation a handful of times and that uh, the answers in those groups is some powerful stuff. So um, everyone is unmuted, so feel free to unmute your individual self and, and ask questions while we have Greg. Well, it sounds like we have a shy audience. Um, was this helpful, or let me let me ask everyone a, a question. One, was this helpful, and then two, does anybody have any success stories around anything that we have covered in terms of LinkedIn helping their career? Ben, maybe I put everybody to sleep. Possibly, or they're they're all muted. So everyone, please pipe up. I know you all aren't aren't shy folks. You're the sales teams. So, Ben, what I, what I'll do is um, let's see. Please type a question here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll share one more unique thing that I really use whenever I'm uh, evaluating a company or. Uh, doing some prospecting, and you can see here that I've done a search for a company, and there's there's a, a, a hidden button on LinkedIn. I'll just pull up Xilab, and then we'll look at maybe one of their competitors or maybe one of their clients. And this hidden button is really really powerful. So obviously LinkedIn is keeping track of companies, and you can search for any company, and and essentially I would say almost any company you can find data on that company. Now this little hidden hidden button that I'm talking about is right here, which is check out insightful statistics about whatever company that you search for. 
And this particular button I find very, very helpful. Whenever I go on a sales call, I will always print this particular page, and then I won't really bring it up in the meeting, but I'll always leave it behind. And what this particular page shows is, is it shows some, some neat things uh, related to Xilab. So here you can see people who searched Xilab, these people also viewed these companies. And you can scroll through to see what the people who searched this particular company also searched for. You can see departures from the company. You can see your connections uh, graphed at Xilab. So you can see the number of connections, how closely you are connected uh, to this company. Um, over here on the, the right-hand side, you can uh, see the previous companies that, that people worked at, um, where the employees are located. So, you know, you have a, just that one page, you have a lot of information. Uh, the most common skills of employees at that particular company, and then the most recommended people at that company. So these are really the, the most influential people, or you could say the most active people on uh, that particular company. Um, from here, you can obviously search any other company, but you know it's pretty good to uh, follow your competitors online. So here you can see, I'm not sure if this is a direct competitor or not, but uh, they're a leader in the enterprise governance, risk management, compliance. And here you can see the, the same statistics. You can see the, the number of em employees that they have, uh, what people also search for related to that. You can see the new titles related to people within the organization. Obviously, you can click on either, either one of these and, and look at um, their profile, where they're based, some of the skills. So it's just real powerful business and intelligence tool that you can use uh, prior to meeting, meeting with a company. So Ben, unless there's uh, any questions or anything else you really wanted to cover, uh, I, I love finishing meetings meetings early. Hello, Craig. Greg, hello. Yes. Hello. C can you hear me? This is the Amsterdam office. Yes, go yeah. ahead. Okay, right. Uh, my, my name is Hans, Hans Willers from the Amsterdam office. I have a question about the uh, uh, anonymous uh, LinkedIn users. I all, uh, Often I uh, come across uh, anonymous uh, uh, people who are sharing uh, 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 LinkedIn, and I sometimes want to uh, really want to know what 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 their real names are. I, I do that sometimes with uh, with Google. I type in their functions or their titles. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is there perhaps another way to uh, to, to get um, uh, to 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 see their real names, etc., stuff like that? Yes. Hans, I think that's uh, a great question, and if I could give a, a visual here, I believe Hans is, is uh, mentioning this, whereas he's searching through LinkedIn from his profile over here on the right-hand side, you can see that five people have viewed uh, my profile within the past three days. And I think he's talking a little bit about this. Hans, feel free to correct me. But here he's, he can see that somebody has viewed his profile and LinkedIn is not necessarily sharing the person's name or even right here, anonymous LinkedIn user. And I'm not exactly sure why that shows up. Maybe they have their parameters set so they're not considered an open networker is one of the reasons. Um, or maybe LinkedIn is trying to get you to upgrade your account so you can see um, the actual person who has viewed your, your account. But I, I don't necessarily know the reason why that shows up as anonymous. It is, a, it is indeed a parameter setting. And I have tried the, uh, the paid version of LinkedIn for a couple of months as well. And it doesn't show anything else uh, instead of uh, these uh, anonymous LinkedIn user or someone in this this or that industry. So, it is a uh, it is a uh, parameter setting. So, my question to you is: Is there any way to uh, uh, to, to 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 see them uh, their, their real names? Um, Hans, I think you had a good technique. Whereas you can see that 
LinkedIn is say so so say if this was anonymous but yet I could still click on it and I would be able to see something related to their their title. I think you had a pretty good technique in terms of going flipping over to Google and searching that person's title or searching something within uh, their profile that you you would be able to search on to see if it does come up. But no, um, I, I don't necessarily know of, of, of any other way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, what would you advise uh, uh, me or salespeople in general uh, about their parameter settings uh, with respect to anonymous uh, anonymous uh, uses of LinkedIn? Because you, I, I can set a parameter so that you you w will not know that it was me watching your site. What would your advice be? My advice would be to, especially for, for sales and business development, is to be an open networker to change your parameters or to set your parameters as open as possible. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. As, a, as a salesperson, you, want, you really want to put yourself, put yourself out there. So here's you know, what others see when, you're, when you've viewed their profile. Some people check this. They want to be anonymous. Yeah. And yeah. or you know I would much rather a so say if I'm searching for a prospective client as I put an advanced search, I would love for that client to go over to his profile and click here, and now he can see me that I've searched for him. Now he picks up the phone and calls me because he has a need for my solution. Or so me. this is I a. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um, sorry. No, I, I think somebody was was getting ready to ask a, a question. Oh yes, I I also have a question. I'm uh, Ronald in the Amsterdam office. Mm -hmm. What Hi, what would you what would you recommend? Um, so uh, uh, when I would be linked to you, uh, you can you there is a setting uh, that you can share all your contacts or only share the the the, the, the contacts we have together yeah, the, share. the shared contact yes and that is really a, a personal setting in terms of how you want to manage your LinkedIn networking I've done both in my career I've uh, done I've created a network which is only IT project managers and only share those connections and then I've also been where I am now an open networker and so really it depends upon how you want to share my feeling on that and again this is just my personal opinion is that there's no reason to hide your connections anybody and everybody has Google running on on their computer and if they want to find anything on link, LinkedIn you can simply go to Google or LinkedIn and, and do a search. So it really, I don't feel as though, my opinion, it benefits much in terms of uh, not showing all your connections to your connections. Okay. And do you have a basic account? I do. I've uh, upgraded before to a paid account. And then I've uh, been, uh, and I do not have a paid account right now. And I don't necessarily recommend moving to a paid account unless you are a recruiter, which then gives you the ability to connect. But simply following those uh, five uh, areas that I shared related to connecting with folks should be enough. And um, they're constantly changing the cost associated with upgrading your account to a paid account, but I, I don't necessarily see the value in, in paying LinkedIn for that. Okay. <clears throat> so I can't recommend it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great, great I guess questions. There no, I guess there are no more questions from the Amsterdam office. No. All right, good. Well, if anyone has any other questions, you can uh, feel free. We'll send out an email with these slides and the recorded webinar. And if anyone thinks of anything, um, please feel free to email us back. And then I will uh, also follow up 
uh, with with a secondary webinar. So. so thank you everyone for your time and hopefully this was helpful and everyone will get uh, the resources and let's uh, if there are any questions, comments, concerns, uh, let's let's share them. Okay, thank you very much for Amsterdam. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Thanks Greg. Bye -bye. Thanks, Ivan.